1. And we'll go to Genesis 2. We'll also read Proverbs 10. I mean, Proverbs 20 and 13. <clears throat> Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Do we have church in this place? Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, that's more like it. Um, we're going to, just just for uh, continuity purposes, um, Genesis 1, 1 and 2. Genesis 1, 1 and 2. That's what we're going to read tonight. Uh, and then we will um, just pick up some few things there. Um, and then we will jump to Genesis 2. Um, let's use the NIV tonight. Um, um, we'll jump to Genesis 2. That's our main scripture. Genesis 2 It's going to be our main scripture for the evening. In the name of the Lord. Let's read Genesis uh, um, chapter 1, verse 1. We can remain seated. That's fine. Um, so that we can all focus on our Bibles there. It's good to come to Recharge Wednesday with a Bible and a notebook um, so that we can move together um, in the Word. Let's read, Mama. Verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Mm -hmm. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the so it's a very simple scripture. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, and scripture says, now the earth was uh, formless. Amen. Amen. I want you to underline the word uh, or, or take note of the word formless. The earth was formless. But, but, but scripture says in verse 1, in the beginning, God created the earth, the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But in verse 2, the Bible says, the earth was formless. Number two, what we get is that the earth was empty. Number three, we, we hear about darkness that was over the surface of the deep. Hallelujah. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, as we decree your word tonight, I pray for wisdom. We pray for mysteries that are going to come out of your word i pray father that oh god you anoint my lips of clay oh father you reason through my mind and speak through my mouth oh god we pray that your word mighty god becomes a seed that is going to germinate in our spirits in jesus mighty and precious name we pray amen hallelujah now 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 scripture says god created the heavens and the earth he created the heavens and the earth uh and 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 one thing that i've been pondering on and asking myself is why doesn't God tell us, or why doesn't the Bible tell us about the, 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 the situation in heaven? It tells us about the, the situation right now on earth. Uh, uh, I would want to, uh, to believe that heaven was also full of, was already full of angels. Heaven was already full of the presence of God. Heaven was already uh, having God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, but, but scripture gives us the condition of earth. Uh, the Bible says the earth was formless and, and empty and darkness was hovering over the deep of the sea. And, and, and praise the Lord that it does not end there. The Bible says, and the spirit of God was hovering over, uh, over the waters. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Then can we then agree that when God, when God created heaven and earth, uh, when God created earth, actually let's focus on earth. When God created earth, which means the work of creation, when after he created the earth, was not complete. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It, it was not complete. Why do we say that? Because there was no form to what he created. Which means he just created, but never injected form to the creation. Amen. Number two, there was nothing in the earth. He created just a container because scripture says it was empty. Hallelujah. Yeah. And it was dark. It was empty. There was nothing else. And, 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 and lo and behold, it's going to be very dangerous for this thing called earth to leave the hand of the creator without form and without nothing inside it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and, and as we continue right there, um, I, I don't want to bore you with a lot of things, uh, but I want you to watch uh, verse, verse 3. Mama, read verse 3. 
uh, and, and I want you to keep these words in your spirit. Formless, emptiness, and darkness. Verse 3, the Bible says, And God said, Let there be light. And God said, Let there be light. And? And there was light. And there was light. Now, understand this. He is not projecting light to heaven. He is projecting light on the earth. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. He says, he says, let there be, light. let there be light. This must take us back to what Mukundi taught when, when, when Jesus Christ says, when, when Jesus Christ says, I must do the work of the one who called me while it is still day. Hello? Now, now Jesus wants to do the work of the one who called him while it is still day. And God, when there was emptiness and there was formlessness and there was darkness, the first thing he calls before he starts the creation is light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Which then we must understand that God was creating a platform to work. He says, he says I cannot do creation in darkness. I, I, I must, for, for me to be able to do proper work on this earth, light, there must be the presence of light. Hallelujah. There must be the presence. And, and Jesus says, I have come to earth to be the light of the world. Which means, which means there is nothing that we can do in darkness. That's why, that's why when Christ came, he also came to bring light. When God created, he did not start by doing any other creation before there was light. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Now, 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 now let's continue. Now, that's the first. In, in verse 3, we get, we, we get God saying, let there be light. That's the first, let there be. And the Bible says, there was light. And God saw it, and it was good. Verse 6. And God says, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. Now, he does the separation of of, 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 of water from the land. Hello, somebody? Hallelujah, somebody? He says, let, let, there, be, let there be a vault uh, uh, between the waters to separate water uh, from water. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Verse number nine. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let the dry ground appear. Uh -huh. And Verse it 10. was so. Verse 10. God called the dry ground land, and the gathered waters he called seas. Verse 11. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land pro produce vegetation, seed bearing plants, and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it. Okay, hold it there. Jump to verse 14. And God said, let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years. Verse 20. And God said, let the water team with living creatures and let the birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. Mm -hmm. So God created the great creatures of the sea and everything living with living thing with which the water steams and that moves about in it according to the to their kinds jump to verse 26 then god said let us make mankind in our image ah. and our likeness so that they may rule over the fish of in the sea and the birds in the sky mm -hmm. over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. Now, now understand this. I'm, I'm, I'm getting, you to, getting you to read all these verses to understand that every let us that God was projecting was not happening under darkness. Yeah. Amen? Every creation that God did, every spoken word that God spoke during creation, he was speaking that under light. Amen? Amen? Now, here is the gist of the matter that I want us to get into. In, in chapter 2, chapter 2, now, the last creation that God spoke was that let us create man in our own image. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbors and neighbor, you might be dark, but you were not created during darkness. <laughs> you were created under the light. We don't know what happened to you. 
but you were created under the light. Hallelujah. I can tell you what happened to me. I was born in the wrong province. I was born light, but in the wrong province. <laughs> now, 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 now God, says, God says, let us make men in our own image. In chapter 2, verse number 1, and verse number 2, and verse number 3. That's where we are. NIV. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. Yes. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. Now, I want you to watch this. By the seventh day, God did what? Had finished the work. Oh, come on, let's talk together. God did what? God did what? God did what? God, did, God finished the work that he, that he started. Hello? He, he, did not, he did not leave the work half done. But scripture says, on the seventh day, God finished the work. Amen? Let's continue. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Uh -huh. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Uh -huh. Because on it, he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Now, tonight I want us to speak another subject. Rest to finish. Rest to finish. Rest to finish. Now, scripture shows us here that, that, that there was work that was supposed to be done on earth because the work, the, the earth was empty. The earth was without form. The earth was full of darkness. God realized that, that my creation is not over. God realized that there is work that I must do. But, 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 but scripture shows us in, verse, in, 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 in chapter 2, the Bible says, thus the heavens and the earth were completed in a way, in, in, in all their vast array. But on the, by the seventh day, God finished the work. He finished what he started. This must challenge me and you, that if we call ourselves Christians, if we call ourselves the children of God, we can't be the children of God and yet not complete what we start. God is surprised. Why do you start things and you don't finish, yet you call yourself my child? Whom do you take after? God is surprised. Uh, who, whose principles are you following? Because I switched on the light so that I must work and I worked and worked. I also worked until I created you. I did not stop until the work was completed. I did not stop until the work was finished. Hallelujah somebody. Hallelujah somebody. And the challenge with many of us, and this is where I, this, this is where I want to hit tonight, the challenge with many of us is that we speak too much about rest, yet we have not worked for the rest. Many of us are too big on saying, no, I need to rest, I need to rest. Many of us, and it has become a habit, I also have that habit, it has become a habit that when we stretch, all of us, we just, I am so tired. You ask yourself, what are you tired of? Because there's no work that has been done. Hallelujah, somebody. Ask your neighbor tonight as a neighbor. What are you tired of? Understand, child of, the, child of God, that rest is for the workers, not for the sleepers. Rest is for the workers, not for the sleepers. He who does not work does not deserve or is not qualified to rest. Amen? Amen? We've just, we, 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 we're just coming out of COVID. I don't care what the numbers are saying. I'm declaring we're coming out of COVID. And, 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 and everybody says, no, I need to rest. I need to rest. You ask yourself, what were you doing? We are moving into festive seasons right now. Where every, everybody wants, everybody's talking about rest. I need to rest. I need to rest from church. I need to rest from work. I need to rest from this. Be careful that you don't rest from things that you need for sustenance. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. And we, and, and we have become so petty, even as children of God, that even on Sunday, we want to rest on Sunday. The, the day where we're supposed to be communicating with God, that's the day where we say, no, I need, I, I need, I need to be resting. Listen, God finished the work he was doing. And he was qualified for rest. And the question tonight is, are you qualified for the rest that you're talking about? Hallelujah, somebody. You cannot enter into rest 
until you have finished the work. Ask your neighbor tonight as a neighbor, where are you resting? At the end of the work or in the middle of the work? Scripture says, God finished the work. God finished the work. And I want to submit this to the church tonight. That it is important that you cannot be ushered to rest until you finish the work. Amen? Now understand, Apostle taught this over the, over the weekend and he just pricked my spirit. He says, rest is part of work. And I did not understand what he was talking about. He said, rest is part of work. And now he explained it. And he said, he said, when you start working, you must have a planned out time to rest within the work. Because when you rest, it affords you time to think about the work. Hallelujah. And, and listen to this one. Allowing yourself to rest will always afford you time for self-introspection. Many of us, the challenge with many of us is that we continue working. We work very hard. We are working so much, but we don't have time to introspect what we are working on. We don't have time to check whether have I made progress on what I'm working on. You cannot check for progress while you are busy working. And, uh, and that is why at your workplace, you've got, you've, got, you've got employees, you've got supervisors, you've got managers. Managers, they are, the work of the manager is to check that there's progress. That the employees are doing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. Now, 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 you must understand that you must allow yourself, you must allow yourself to come to a rest, to come to a still position so that you can check whether, so that you can have time for self-introspection. Have I made progress in my life? Amen, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. Remember, we're talking about rest to, to finish. You will not be able to finish unless you introspect yourself. And, 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 and this applies also to our Christian journey. Many of us have just been running. We've just been serving. We've just been so busy. But there's no progress. Why? Because there's no time for self-introspection. Allowing yourself to rest will always afford you time for self-evaluation. Somebody say self-evaluation. Somebody say self-evaluation. One of the things that I do on Sunday evening when I get home I have to listen to the message I preached on Sunday afternoon. I am not waiting for somebody to evaluate me. I am not waiting for somebody to come and tell me, no, 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 H, you took long, or oh, that point there. there was, I need to evaluate myself. And sometimes when I'm listening to myself, I'm pinching myself, Mukundi. Why did I say that? No, that was not supposed to be said. Because if, you'd, if you lack self-evaluation, you will lack self-progress. There's no progress in your life. And that is why you've got a lot of enemies. <laughs> oh, let's talk. This is Richard Jagit. You've got a lot of enemies. There are a lot of, you, you see, your block list is bigger than your contact list. Because anyone else that comes to evaluate you and correct you, you block. When Mama Ayo calls me and says, hey, Bafunzi, hey, I just need to talk to you. No, the message you preached was powerful, but I block. When my yaga calls, hey, no, but I block. Why? Because you always want to surround yourself with people that praise you. The, and the problem is not the praises. The problem is not the surrounding of the people that you have. No, the problem is that you don't as afford yourself time to evaluate yourself. How am I doing on the course? How am I doing on the race that I'm running? How am I doing on the task that I've been given? Uh-uh. Ask your neighbor, the neighbor, when last did you evaluate yourself? We come into the end of the year. Bonuses are going to be coming. You are going to be spending money like nobody's business and you're going to come back next year. You, you did not afford yourself time to evaluate. I mean, you can't be perfect in everything that you do. You are also a human being. You make mistakes. Let me tell you something. For you to keep people around you, listen to me. It is better for you to find faults yourself 
So that when people come to you and say, you did not bath, you say, you know, you know what, I know I, 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 didn't, I, I didn't have water this morning at home. Then you're not offended. Hallelujah. You are taking offense of things that you should have evaluated yourself. Amen. Amen. How, when have we, when last did we evaluate? As a couple, do you sit at home and say, let's evaluate our financial status. As a church, we keep on welcoming new members. New members, but there's no evaluation that has been applied. And, and you think the church is growing. The church is not growing. Hallelujah. Those that, are, those, those that drive, you will understand. When you put petrol, you say full tank. When you are, you are inside the car, but you keep looking at the gauge there. With, are they pouring the right amount? Because you want to evaluate whether what you ask for is being done. And God, God has sent me tonight to challenge you. What he sent you for on earth, evaluate yourself. Are you doing the right work? Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Listen to me, child of God. Rest is not sleeping. Mm -mm. And I'll show you. I'll, 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 I'll get it on, on, on scripture right now. Rest is not sleeping. What is rest? Rest is allowing yourself time to recharge and refill. Hallelujah. Many, many, many of you guys, and, and including myself, when we get tired, I am so tired. I need to rest. Let me go and sleep. Who said, and, and many of us that are seated here, we sleep but we're not resting. Because when we are sleeping, because there is work that is not completed, because there is work that is not finished, when we are sleeping, we are thinking. And you, 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 you are surprised. Why? I, but I slept early. Why am I so tired? When you wake up, no, you, you, your body was sleeping, but you were not sleeping. Understand that you are not your body. You, you, your body was sleeping. Your body was at a standstill, but your spirit was not sleeping. Amen? Amen? Do, do you guys experience that sometimes? Do you experience? Uh, because it happens to me sometimes when I'm working on something at work and I go home, I'm, I'm done. Uh, it's five o'clock, we need to knock off, we go. Uh, but, but, but you are going because others are going. <laughs> but the work is not done. Hallelujah. That's the difference between managers and employees. Employees work nine to five. Managers work until the work is done. Managers work until the work is done. Hallelujah. And managers are not titles. This is not a title. And it's not a salary. No, it's a commitment. I need to say that again for somebody tonight. Because your perspective about your work needs to change. <laughs> you think being a manager is moving a salary bracket. No, you won't move that salary bracket until you show the commitment to the bracket. And how do you show the commitment to the bracket? Change your mindset. It's not about nine to five. It's about working until the work is done. The work of the day. Now, 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 some of us, the work of the day is not done. You sleep, your spirit is still worried. And you wake up, you're still tired. Why? Because you, there was no time to recharge and to refill. Hallelujah. Ask your neighbor tonight as a neighbor. When last did you recharge? If a car needs petrol recharge, battery recharge, what more of you? Listen to this one. If you are too busy to rest your body, that is the time your body needs to rest you. Can I read that again? If you are too busy to rest your body, that is the time your body needs to rest you. I'm, I'm, I'm also a culprit of this one. Many of us are so busy very, very, very much busy. And you will hear, you will hear that this fatigue kicking in here. I'm, I'm, I'm getting very tired. And now, when you find yourself too busy to, 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 to rest your body, you must know that is the time that the body must rest. Because if you do not afford yourself, if you don't admit yourself into, into the ICU of rest, you're going to kill people. Eh? And you're going to kill yourself. Why? 
because you have not even evaluated. You, are even, you, you end up making big mistakes on the project that you are doing because you have not even evaluated yourself. Hallelujah, somebody. Watch Proverbs chapter number, chapter number 20, verse number 13. Before I pass, I need to talk about this thing before I pass. Yeah, uh, do you have the TPT version there? Yeah, Proverbs 20 and, and, and verse 13. Verse 30. Verse 30. 30. Three zero. Yeah. Okay. When you are punished severely. Uh, where are you? Proverbs 20. Yes. Verse 30. Yes. Verse 13. 13, sorry. 13. They gave me 30. They looked 30. Uh, 13. One, three. Sorry, mom. If you spend all your time sleeping, you'll grow poor. So wake up. Sleepy head, don't sleep on the job, and then there will be plenty of food on your table. If you spend your time, what sleeping? Ah, school many was alone. If you spend your time, what sleeping. sleeping? You see, this is where many of us make an excuse that I'm no, I need to rest, I'm asleep. Now, scripture says, If you spend your time sleeping, you will grow poor. You are not born poor, you are just growing poor. Because you are spending your time on the excuse, I need to rest. Hallelujah. Now, now understand, scripture, where we, where we read in the book of Genesis chapter 2, God did not sleep. God finished the work and he disengaged from the work. He took himself out of the work and the Bible says he then ordained the seventh day to be a time to rest. He did not sleep. Hallelujah, somebody. He did not sleep. And, and, and this is the problem with many of us. We, we want to go to sleep and we say, no, guys, I, I need to rest. I'll, I'll be sleeping for the next three days. Listen here. You, you are sleeping the next three days. Poverty is growing on you. While you're sleeping. And if you can check, many of us, the amount of hours we spend on work and the amount of hours we spend in sleep, rest, they don't balance. Actually, more are the amount of hours we spend in sleep. I get challenged by the apostle. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a hard worker. But that man, every, every day, by 5 o'clock, he's up. While some of us are still snoring. Whether it's December, January, June, it doesn't matter. By 5 o'clock, he's up. He'll be the one calling us. It's time for prayer. While we're still snoring. And scripture shows us that if you spend too much time sleeping... Poverty is going to, you will grow poor yourself. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Now, now God ordained the seventh day. And he says, this day, I must rest. I must look at what I've created. And when he has looked at what he has created, scripture shows us that he saw that everything was good. He evaluated men. He evaluated the waters. He evaluated the animals. He, how did he do this? He did this when he had disengaged himself from work. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Now we're coming into December. People are talking about going for holiday. Please, don't go for holiday to go swim at the beach. No. Go for holiday. Sit and have time to evaluate. Create time and say, how have we been doing? How are things going? What can we improve? That's why you are too big on New Year's resolution. I'm not so big on those things. And you, you hear, you will hear them in January. This year is my year, 2022. Uh, it's, yeah, it's 22, right? It's the year of the doubles. It's coming. And you ask yourself, what is this? How different is this year from last year? No, prophetically, God is going to raise you double, double, double. Let me tell you something. Don't double. Forget about the double if you never did evaluation because you are still the same person. You did not use your rest profitably. Listen to this one. Taking time to rest will ensure that you drive success and stay on course until the end. People that are fatigued lose their temper easily. Hello, somebody? I don't know about you. Maybe you are holy. I'm, I'm like that as well. When I'm too tired and you just say something that I feel like it doesn't make sense, 
I lose my temper very quickly. And then the problem is not the person that spoke. Huh? No, the problem is that when are you are tired, you have not disengaged yourself from you are no no you see you are too much passionate that you feel like the work cannot continue without you. Now, when you take time and say, let me disengage myself from work, you make sure that success is guaranteed on the work. That's number one. Number two, when you disengage yourself from work, you make sure that longevity is applied on the work. The work outlives you. The work will sustain even when you are not there. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Number, number three, when you disengage yourself and say, I need to rest. Remember, you are resting to finish. You make sure that you stay on course. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Listen to this one. If you're writing, you can write. Rest is not a sign of quitting. But a time of evaluation. Never excuse me to be saying I am going for a time of rest to say I'm quitting. It's not a time of quitting. I am not quitting. I have just realized that I'm no longer on course. Now watch this. The fact that you're not on course does not need a prophecy. No. It's, it's a self thing. You must tell yourself. You must find out yourself. It's a, it comes out of self introspection as, as we have said. Hallelujah somebody. And, and many of you right now you are busy running and you, are, you can see that there's going to be an accident here. You are waiting for a prophecy to come. Unfortunately, the prophecy is going to find you in hospital. Because these are things that you should have discovered, but you will not discover them if you don't apply yourself to rest. Hallelujah. And, 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 and we always want to think it's quitting. Why? Because we are out not to fulfill the work, but we are out to prove the point. We are not working to fulfill the work. We want to prove a point to people that, we are, not even that, that are not even competing with us. It is us that is competing with them. Hallelujah. Look at, look at the image that we have used tonight. This is, this is a woman that has been jogging. And, and look at her. She, 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 she has just rested. She is not out of the course. She is still in the course, but she says, you know what, I need to, I need to take a break so that I can get to the end. Hallelujah, somebody. Those that, are, those that are running with her, probably some of them have passed her. But understand, we don't all have the same capacity. Hallelujah. Shake your neighbor tonight as a neighbor. Understand your capacity. Then you will be able to finish. Listen to this one. Lack of rest will always result in you missing the rest of your future. There is, there is so much hope on you. So much greatness that God has released upon your life. But if you do not disengage yourself from work, you are going to miss it. You are going to die young. You are going to die before time. Why? Because you don't afford yourself time to disengage. Hallelujah, somebody. I've, I've, since, since we began this church, I've been telling myself, and I, I, I have not yet done it, but one day I must do this thing. I've been telling myself, there must be a Sunday I wake up and I say, I'm not coming to church. I'm going to another church. And I'm going to sit to be taught. And let, let, some, let Mukundi come here and speak. And I go to another church. Why? Because I, I can't keep on running and there's no refueling. What kind of a car am I? I can't keep on running and there's no one that's speaking over my life. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. And, 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 and if I keep on running, mama always, oh, always wants me. My mama, she, she, she always wants me. She's like, you are taking after your dad. You will see this vision, but you will not touch it. Because you are running so fast. You are always busy. You are always busy. You are always busy. But when are you going to take time to disengage, to check and evaluate your busyness? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And many of us, you see, you see why we don't, we don't disengage ourselves? We put ourselves under unnecessary pressure. Undo. Under unnecessary pressure. And we tell ourselves, no, this thing must be done next week. Next week, this thing must be happening. But 
You are the one that put that time. And if you have to change it, you must change it. No one else. But no, you, put, you work the whole night. But you are no longer focused on the work. You are fatigued. And, and many of us are seated here. We are fatigued. We are no longer focused on what we need to do. Some of us have even gone out of the course. Not because we were supposed to, but we are fatigued. We're tired. Can we just be like God tonight and, and afford ourselves? You know what? Let me, let me get into the rest of God and understand, God, where am I in life? What am I doing in life? How am I doing? Hello. See, you, see, you see, sometimes uh, scripture speaks about, uh, in, in Psalm 91, it, sp it speaks about a person who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Shall abide under the shadow of the, of, of, of the Almighty. He says, I will say of the Lord, he is my strength, my, my refuge, blah, 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 blah. You see, you see that, that, that is a place that each and every Christian, once in a year, you must go into a secret place. Aye, hallelujah. Listen to me. You must go in a secret place. And this is a place where it's you and God. Where you say, God, re recharge me. What made, what made Elijah to hide himself into the cave and says, God, it's enough, kill me. This guy was tired. He just dealt with 450 prophets of Baal. He ran away from, uh, from Jezebel. He was tired. One time, one time we were in an, in an online prayer. Back at home, I was still young. Um, but I was in the worship team playing instruments. Um, and, and back at home in the youth center there. So, you know, yeah, they've got kittens like this. So while we were praying in an online prayer, <laughs> In, in an online prayer, so one of the elders, oh my God, I hope he's not watching, um, uh, one of the elders uh, went and, and stood there by the corner of the curtains. Like, he was not sleeping. He was standing, and he got behind the curtain, and he fell asleep. And it was around one during the online prayer. He fell asleep, and then the apostles started a song. Back at home when we were praying during online prayer, the lights are off. When he starts a song, the lights go on. And, and we all went back to our seats. And we were sitting there. Then the apostles started teaching. And when he's teaching, hey, this man comes out of the curtains. You ask yourself, who was this? But this guy, this guy was in the presence of the Lord, but he was tired. He was tired. And how many of us are here? We come to church every Sunday, but we're tired. But we don't want to be true to ourselves. And that's why we will never be ushered to rest. And hence, we will never be able to finish the work. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. You are not a candidate of rest if you have not applied any work. Let's try that again. You are not a candidate of rest if you have not Ah, oh, speak after me. If you have not If you have not applied any work. I need to finish. Rest is for people that have worked. Rest will always ensure, oh, I love this one. Rest will always ensure that your creativity is on high standard. Hallelujah. You, you, see, you see, it's difficult for you to think. It's difficult for you to remain on your A game if you don't, if you don't rest. And, 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 and that is why right now, in your life, it's mediocrity. Everything is just being done to, for the sake of being done. Why? Because you're not resting. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I remember, Mama, I was saying to me, no, but Fonzie, let's, let's put together projects that needs to be done in the church, blah, 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 blah. Let's put it, and, and let's do these projects, and let's finish, and let's rest. And let's evaluate what we've done. Because if we don't do that, we are keeping on doing. We are keeping on doing. We are, People are going to get tired because there's no rest here. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And, and how do you give yourself time to be creative if you have never rested? Because you must understand that rest will always boost your thinking. Hallelujah. Can I talk to couples tonight? Have, have time at home to say, you know what? This is time where we, are, we, we stay away from the kids. We stay away from everything. This is time for rest. Let us understand where are we as a couple. Shake your neighbor as a neighbor. Rest to finish. Hallelujah. Remember that resting is also restoring of strength. 
Resting is restoring or restoration of strength. Now, wherever we talk about the word restoration, which means you are putting back what was there. Amen? Amen? You see, you see, you see, in spirituality, there is no, what do you call this thing? This red thing that we drink for energy. No, the other one. Dragon. There's no dragon. There's no power rate. There's no, there's no, there's no, uh, what's the small one? That's good. There's a lot of caffeine. There's no Red Bull. Where you can just drink and all of a sudden you're energized. You, 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 and, and you see, the, and, and that's why many of you are damaging your bodies. Your bodies are so damaged because you realize, you know, there was one time, yo, I was doing, that year, I was so busy. I think from September, every Saturday all the way to January, I was doing an, an event every single year. I even hired a driver. And every time, I'm, I'm, I, was, I, was, I was a dragon addict. I was drinking that monster. They used to know me. Three of them. Because I'm moving from one event. I remember there was one Saturday, I did an event in Pulukwane, an event in Venda, then I came back to another event in, in Johannesburg. One person. And then we keep, we, we, on the outside, we look like we are running. But on the inside, we are dying. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And unfortunately, that's the state where many of us are at. On the outside, we look like we are running. Can I, can I tell you a hard truth? You were born and you found money. You will die and you will leave money. Hallelujah. You, you were born and you found this money. And you are busy running after it. I'm telling you, when you are busy running after it, it's running away from you. Because even if you, even if you accumulate it, you won't even know how to spend it because you have not even rested to understand and budget how to spend it. Listen to this one before I close. Remember that resting is also, resting will also rest your mind and improve your productivity level. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ask your neighbor tonight, say, neighbor, how productive are you? Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. How productive are we? And let's, 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 let's remove the spirit from these things. In our workplace, are we productive? Or you, or you go there on, on a Monday. Hey, I am so tired. I was preaching yesterday. Ah, I was so tired. I was in a crusade. But the, the boss doesn't want to know those things. The boss wants you to be productive. And, and, and as well, we as Christians, because we are not productive, we are misrepresenting the kingdom. And you will hear people when they say, when, when you go for an interview, the moment you say you're a Christian, they say, hey, hey, we're not hiring you. Because Christians are not to be lazy. Christians are not to be lazy. They've got faith, but they're so lazy. Everything about them, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. The God, oh, the, the God is getting ready to overwhelm me with unusual grace in my life. But you are not applying work for the grace. There's no work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You find a whole, a whole woman, a whole woman. No, I'm looking for work. They wake up in the morning, they eat, they sleep, watch TV. You know how the soap is on TV. But there's no work that has been applied. We're getting in the evening right now. You cannot show anything that you have done. What have you done? You were at work today. Indeed, you, were, you didn't go to work. You were at telephone exchange. You were on the phone the whole day. No productivity. How productive are you? And like I said, let me repeat it. The, the productivity that you apply as a child of God is how you are representing the kingdom. Hallelujah. You are a student. You are a child of God. Okay. I don't want to make people uncomfortable. It's not that you are not intelligent. You are very intelligent. But you are failing all the courses. Because you don't study. You, do, you don't study. You, do, you don't apply work. Amen. 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 Tell your neighbor, it's a neighbor. Rest is for workers. It's for workers. People must work. Then they can be able to rest. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. We, we, we get it here. In, 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 in verse 2 of, of, of chapter 2, the Bible says, by the seventh day, God finished the work and had, uh, I mean, that he had been doing. So, so on the seventh day, he rested from all the work. I love verse 3. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it a holy day. That's where the word holiday comes from. He made that day holy. Hallelujah. Which means, which means he has dis, disengaged himself. And, 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 and when he talks about the seventh day, he talks about the Sabbath. He says, we're, we're not working here. But the way we now we are so busy. We even work on the Sabbath. But Sabbath is not working on us. I said this earlier on. People who do not apply rest are always on the edge to lose their temper. Listen to this one. Working too long without rest reduces your concentration and can depreciate your emotional capacity. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. It depreciates your emotional capacity and also reduces your concentration levels. It's so, it's so shameful to sit in a meeting in a boardroom and you see a person... You must know there was no rest applied here. Hallelujah, somebody. I mean, how can you how can you be a man? You're watching TV until one o'clock in the morning. One o'clock in the morning, Victor. When do you apply the rest? And when are you going to when are you going to get the strength to finish the work? I'm done. Rest will always afford your body the capacity to carry you for the next phase of your life. Your body is a container that has been created by God so that it must keep on carrying you to your destination. Amen? Amen? Say, my body is a container that must carry me to my next destination. Hallelujah. So therefore, therefore, listen to me. If you don't take care of it, it won't take care of you. Actually, let me put it this way. If you don't take care of it, it won't carry you. If you don't take care of it, it does not have the ability to carry you. How will it carry you when it's tired? And yet we're saying, you know, uh, uh, finishing is better than starting. We are going to finish the How will you finish the work? And the devil is laughing at you. He's like, ah, oh, this one is going. Some of the sicknesses you're suffering, you're not supposed to suffer from. Only if you apply the rest. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The word rest, the word rest, it's an acronym, and I wanna, I'm, I'm going to give it to you. If you can write it down on your notes, R-E-S-T. R-E-S-T. If you're ready, say, I'm ready. R-E-S-T. Number one. The, the word R means retreat from your work. Retreat from your work. Move away from your work. Learn to watch from a distance. Watch your work and introspect yourself. You will not introspect the work when you are in the work. You must retreat yourself from the work. Amen? Hallelujah. Number two, enter into God's presence. <laughs> Retreat yourself from the work and enter into God's presence. You must enter into God's presence for you to be able to rest. Can I go on? The letter S means separate from the masses. If you want to, to, if you want to get into real rest, separate from the masses. That's why Jesus says in the book of Matthew, you, all ye that are laboring and are heavily laden, he says, come to, he says, come to me and I will give you rest. He says, leave from where you are and come to me so that, I may, so that I may give you rest. So if you want to rest, you must separate yourself from the masses. And the letter T means trust in God. Trust in God. Somebody say trust in God. Hallelujah. Retreat, enter, separate, and trust. Retreat, 
enter, separate, and trust. That's what's important. You need to retreat yourself. Disengage yourself from the work. And enter into God's presence. Separate yourself from the masses. And trust in God. When you apply those things into your life, when you apply the rest into your life, I assure you that you are guaranteed to finish the work until the end. Many of us, we've got great visions and we've started great things. But the challenge is that we won't be able to see these things until the end. Hallelujah. Obaba Moses spent time with God for 40 days and 40 nights at Mount Horeb. Remember, when God gave him the tablets and when he came down from Mount Horeb, this guy was there for 40 days and 40 nights. It was hectic at the mountain. He came down at Mount Horeb. This guy, I, w- I want to assume that this guy was also tired for 40 days and 40 nights. What was he eating there? Probably he was not eating. He was fasting and praying, hearing God speak. God give him the tablets and everything else. This guy comes down. The scripture says, the moment he sees what people have done, creating the golden calf. Because this guy was fatigued. He threw the tablets. The scripture says it's the work of God. He threw it down, broke it down, and he got angry. He got angry. But imagine if this guy, if, if, if this guy had said, you know what, before I admit myself in this problem, I need to rest so that I must apply my mind. We are, we are hitting and breaking a relationship that we're not supposed to be broken. Because we are not applying our minds because there's no rest. Can I submit to you? This is the last thing. It's not every problem that you must address because it has happened now. It's not every problem that you must address now. No, it has happened. No, you feel the need. No, 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 no. You, 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 you. Your, your emotional capacity has depreciated. It will also depreciate the relationship. Allow yourself to rest first and say, let's, let's speak about this thing tomorrow. Let's shelve it. Let's speak about this thing tomorrow. I always say this to couples. Shelve stuff. But, but, but many of us, we feel the need to speak our mind. But we're speaking our mind out of a depreciated emotions. Because we have not rested. Do you know that when you're fighting as a couple... Uh, or, or a friend to friend, whatever, and you're fighting, it takes a toll on you. It takes too much out of you. Too much out of you that you, you are tired, yet you don't realize. And you wanting to react and address the issue out of fatigue, it's just going to mess up things. Therefore, retreat and enter and separate and trust in God so that you can finish the work. Shake your neighbor tonight as a neighbor. Rest so that you can finish the work. Turn to another neighbor and say, neighbor, apply rest so that you can finish the work. Hallelujah. Because rest is for the workers. So you must first have the work. Then you can have the rest. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's give God a hand of praise together. Let's lift up our right hand as we pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come to that throne of grace tonight, O God. I pray for each and every one under the sound of my voice. That, oh God, you have ordained us, mighty God, for destiny. You have ordained us, mighty God, until the end to finish the work. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that, oh God, in the midst of us working, that, oh God, we are able to apply rest as you have applied rest, mighty God, in the beginning when you created the heavens and the earth. Oh, mighty God, you did the work and you rested. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus for men and women that will be able to rest, men and women that will be able to uh, to, to evaluate, to do self-introspection. Father, in the name of Jesus, to afford ourselves time, almighty God, for a refill and a recharge in the work that you've given us, in different disciplines that you've positioned us. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, as we approach the end of the year, I pray that, oh God, in the name of the Lord God Almighty, usher us into 
rest, Almighty oh God. In the name of Jesus, that, oh God, we are able to disengage ourselves from the work. We are able to separate ourselves from the masses. We are able to enter your rest, oh God. We are able to enter into a season where we say we trust in you no matter what. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray, Spirit of the living God, that, oh God, we rest so that we can be able to finish and accomplish the work that you have given us, the mandate that you have put upon us to fulfill right here on earth. In Jesus' mighty and precious name, I pray. Amen and amen.